We arrived here in 1976 and I thought it was just the most amazing place I'd ever been. I love the, the obvious beauty of the place, beaches, being surrounded by sea, all the different habitats. We didn't have any electric at all when we first moved here. We used uh, paraffin lamps and then later as a vast improvement we had gas lights. <laughs> but we lived like that for a long, long time. And then we had a feasibility study done which suggested using all three technologies, some wind and water, link them all together, which had never actually been done before. The percentage of electricity produced varies every year, depending on the weather. You know, we're totally weather dependent for all aspects. I think it's been as much as 95%. Now we've got these additional photovoltaics, I think there's a good chance that, you know, it'll be pretty much 100% from here on in. So in the beginning when we first set up Egg Electric, it was slightly more expensive than people were paying across on the mainland. With the present price hikes that have been going on with power providers on the mainland, I think we're actually slightly cheaper than people are paying just across the water. So usually uh, we get most of our power from the hydro, uh, from the hydroelectric generator which is over on the other side of the island. It's usually wet enough here that the hydro goes. Occasionally we get long dry spells and we rely more on the solar and the wind. but Usually between wind, solar and hydro, it's, it's one or the other. The hydro does the bulk of the work most of the time. If there's an emergency, we have diesel generators that will, that will kick in. There's about 120 people who are more or less residents on egg at the moment. In the summer, at full capacity, there can be as many as another 150 visitors here on any given day. Most of the islanders know that they can't use more than five kilowatts in their houses and that's that's kind of all they need to know. Um, as long as they don't use too much electricity then everything works it's fine. The single unit that we use the most often and that takes the most power out there is obviously a water kettle. That's the biggest power drain at it, um, the biggest luxury we, we allow ourselves. And usually we don't go over three kilowatt at a time with how we live and, and how we found the way for us to run certain machines. So I didn't feel like I had to change my life entirely, move around 180 degrees and, and move backwards or anything. I did start relocating here permanently in 2020. My wife, she has fortunately a job where she can work remotely and on the internet, which is another very good aspect here on Egg as well. During our travels, we found this island here where the kids are coming back and people are moving here. And that's mostly through um, the microgrid, because you have a stable power situation. And that did tell us, okay, we should focus our search on something where we like the community, where we like the spirit of the people, where we would um, be able to contribute to a community and not be somebody like in Guangzhou where we lived for 10 years where you don't know your neighbors, you're in a skyscraper of a hundred stories and you don't know anybody. 12th of June 1997 is our anniversary of the buyout. 24 years later, well, the, the number of visitors has, has probably trebled since then. The uh, number of residents has nearly doubled. You know, owning the island has made a huge difference to everybody here, I think. You know, people have got a, an immense pride in what's been achieved here from our own renewable supply and also all the other things that have happened here. I would love to see more uh, renewable energy worldwide. I mean, I think it's possible. The sun shines, the wind blows. The sea is particularly interesting. I think tidal, wave power, there's a, a lot of potential there that's not really been explored enough. But yeah, I don't see any reason why not on a far bigger scale than what Egg's doing. <laughs>